with soybeans. So that's a pretty significant amount. And if you break that up, into areas that have a potential for deep and shallow infiltration. So I, I come in deciduous forest, CRP grassland, um, and uh, a, a wetlands forest, and wetland forest. So that adds up to, in that zone, 17%. So about 20% of that total acreage of the 95,000 acres has the potential for deep infiltration. These are all generic terms, of course, because you have all this little pocket. But that leaves 73 percent with shallow infiltration, and then the roads. You think the roads are so much, but the roads and how buildings, at least in Iowa, are only 10 percent of the issue. They're a big issue because you get zero infiltration in it, you know, below a building or a road. But the the big issue. This is a big item that that's out there is increasing deep infiltration in the open land. In um, a rural county like Jefferson County, Fairfield, where I'm from, uh, Fair, I think the city of Fairfield, the urban area is about 4,000 acres. We have 250,000 acres of cropland, so it's 99.999% you know, you know, <laughs> is, is... You know, couldn't we divert some of that tiled off water, surface water, to use for industrial processes like steeping corn and for growing algae to produce biodiesel and, and things of that nature. Um, you would think you'd be able to do something like that. Because right now, I believe our industrial processes for doing that, we're using precious aquifer water yeah. to oh, process our, our ethanol and all that type of thing. But if there was a way we could use surface water for those industrial processes, we could make a huge dent on preventing floods and, 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 uh, and things of that nature. Yeah. One of the, I think one of the issues with using water storage and, and, and you know finding a reuse for water as a solution to um, runoff issues is that just so much you know each acre is a million gallons of water a year and so you know you, the city of Fairfield is four billion gallons of water so even if you could use all that I mean if you could catch it and, and think about using it it's way more than you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that that's an sure. issue too, in, unless you have these big industrial uses for it. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Is, is you could grow algae, you could grow, uh, there's this company called Juul, who are using genetically engineered bacteria to convert wastewater into uh, diesel fuel or into a fuel, biofuel, and they can do it at 15,000 gallons per acre. Um, so, I mean, there's some industrial uses, applications of, the, of surface water that would take a lot of pressure off of our aquifer water. Also, what about converting that to hydro power? Because the force, is, if it has quite a bit of force and you can capture it, just have little turbines in the field. Well, micro turbines will provide a small amount of power. The challenge with, with hydro power, correct me if I'm wrong, Lonnie, you need, you need a head and the flow. Yeah, it's got a drop. And we don't have the head, the drop. And, and even if you have a great flow without the drop, it's really hard to get generate the power. And I've tried these calculations to put little hydro turbines in uh, and a roof. And boy, I crunched those numbers in the best way possible, and it was still like two kilowatts a year. <laughs> it was so sad. I was like, oh, for all the effort, let's stick on another solar panel. You know, it just it just didn't pan out. So unfortunately, no. Um, you were talking about this, this shallowness of the tiles in these gullies. Mm -hmm. um, Lou, Lou Lift gave a presentation here today. He oh, has yeah. something called Ecolotree. Mm -hmm. And what he does is plant poplars and willows in areas to remediate toxics. But also this, could, this serves as a block for for erosion, so but these can also be used as crops. So if a farmer wanted to stop the rapid erosion in these gullies, they could plant plant the um, the poplars and the willows uh, to stop the erosion and still get a crop. Yeah. Oh, I I, I would love for all farmers to sign up with Lulick <laughs> for sure. I mean, it's it's a brilliant idea. 
Although, what Lonnie or Ann was noting, the fact that when you've got the trees at the stream bank, you have a little bit of a challenge because it helps with the erosion, but it doesn't help with infiltration because it's adjacent to the stream. And so the water is just too close to the stream to get the deep infiltration, but at least you're, it's helping with erosion. We need Lou Lick and Wes Jackson to get together. There, there we go. go. There <laughs> go. There go. <laughs> Anybody who's interested in perennial farming systems and thinking about sustainable farming paradigms, the Land Institute is a wonderful resource. Um, years and years of, um, of history, or sorry, of um, scientific information that backs up a perennial land, perennial farming landscape. What about Leopold Center? Isn't that oh. s is the Leopold Center in the uh, Is it Iowa State University? The Leopold Center? Yeah. Or the same thing? The Land Institute has a fantastic little conference in the fall. It's very inexpensive for Canada. The Prairie yeah. Festival. Yeah. No. So that's our time, and we kind of covered all the major topics. Um, if you want to stick around for five minutes and see the losing ground video, it's pretty awesome. Um, but technically, we're done. <laughs> Um, and if you want to stay and ask questions, uh, you're more than welcome to as well. And so the website has the whole report as well with all this, you know, the additional stats. Pretty amazing. Another, another resource for these kinds, particularly in urban areas, is a uh, guy named Wayne Peterson. Yes, Wayne is awesome. the Department of Land Stewardship. Yeah, if you want to know what to do to like deal with infiltration and actually solve it, this is mainly awareness raising. But Wayne is the guy who's like the state expert. What about what about incentives for residents to have rain barrels and, and ways to collect rain and, 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 and use the rainwater for domestic uses? I think on the city is program right now for rain barrels, don't they? Or maybe it's just rain gardens. I know that la a couple years ago they were actually providing some funding for, for installing rain gardens. And on the handouts I gave you, I also provided a link to something called uh, Rain Pillow. So if you want to get really serious about collecting rain wa water, you can get a thousand gallon basically pillow to stick in your shed or in your basement and collect enough rain water to do all your irrigation. I, I, I've used rain water for all my home domestic uses. I'm not they don't have a well for 15 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bonnie's like the guru living <laughs> example <laughs> of like how to truly look green. No, that's not really Is this the Lonnie, famous one that's Lonnie Gamble? No. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard about you. <laughs> <laughs> we all have weaknesses, Lonnie, but uh, as far as those go, you're, 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 you're several steps above most of us. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks. And if you have questions, Feel free to ask. Thank you. Thank you. in the wrong way with all these levees and stuff when what we really need to do is find ways to use rainwater. That's Water fed management. Yeah. Green buffer zones. I know Rob Kogis put together a couple of climate groups one day. Government change things all the time, but yeah. it's you know you got to work. You know somebody's probably going to have to get compensated for the water rights that they own and all that kind of stuff. Right. But it can but be these, done. These laws have been in place since, yeah. since the 1800s. So yeah. it's not right. yeah. simple like oh right. we're just going to modify well, but it. Here, here's here's yeah. something. I, yeah. I think this whole water thing yeah. is going to be more of an issue than than oil. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. We're going to be next, yeah. the the thing is <laughs> we're going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to figure out how we get water to where we have it in excess to yeah. the places that need it. Yeah. We're going to have pipelines yeah. where we're going to be yeah. piping yeah. water. Yeah. That's going to well, because we that's did. what climate. Well, yeah. and it's going to increase. It's yeah. going to have to because yeah. climate change is a reality and it, it's changing the whole gamut of how we're going to have to. Well, one of those links is to a 48-page document that chronicles all violent events related to water rights in the last. 4,000 yeah, years, yeah. you know, and it's oh, like, oh, <laughs> 48 yeah. pages of, really? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> if that's really true, yeah. I how mean, do we do the right thing? How, yeah. how can we do gray water? How can we do yeah, these well, things? Yeah, well, you can here, but uh, some places. It's I think the problem is, is, I mean, first of all, it's education. I mean, yeah. all of these issues, it's education. But, you know, getting somebody to sit down and understand the linkage between watershed 
and climate change, mm -hmm. you know, they first of all they need to not be ADHD. I mean, they really have to sit down <laughs> yeah, yeah. because K it is multiple layers. <laughs> it's multiple yeah. layers of problems and potential solutions, and you know, that's. I mean, this is. A well, see, here's, here's you know what I mean? a, this is what's so frustrating. There's so many problems. You hear so much about the problems. I want to hear about the solutions. I yeah. want something to be done. Yeah, yeah. I want to be people to be proactive for a change instead of so reactive. Yeah. Putting up levees and, 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 and flood protection things is not the solution. Yeah. It's not the solution because what, what we're going to do is we're going to spend billions well, of dollars. And the thing is, is we're continuing to mm -hmm. we're continuing to develop. We're continuing to detile. It's just going to get worse. Well, here's, you know, one, one of the things that you know, Wayne did. Actually, really here's, is. this is yeah. not a nice joke, but yeah. somebody um, who lives in the Davenport area said to me, um, this is like a week or so ago, well, I'm really kind of glad they finally got their water, their flood, because we've been watching on the news for a month and a half Set, you know, 6, 7 a.m. newscasters out there with their waiting boots on <laughs> saying, wait, wait. this is where it's going to happen, folks. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. going to be this, yeah. you know. Yeah. This like, yeah. You know, so it's like, we, okay, if we have enough time, you know, ahead of time, we know it's going to happen. Doesn't that also just lend itself to the fact that we, sh we should know that we're, the way we're going about this is, is all wrong, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. sto stormwater yeah. utilities is, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to No, it's okay. So stormwater utilities where um, people have to pay for impervious services. So you go to a place like Cedar Rapids, I mean like Iowa City, and every place we have these, you know, zero impervious, you pay a fee every year because the city has to deal with that. But if you put imperv you, know, you make um, your property permeable, you don't pay that fee. And then, and then maybe some of the fees to get paid go to support the people who are doing the permeable services. So take a strategic approach. You got to hit the, you get, get got to hit the things where you get the most bang for your buck. That's that's what you got to do. And, and that video really showed us with the subsidies that basically our, our cost structure is set up to incentivize bad behavior. Yeah, exactly. And then FEMA will come in after the flood is yeah, in right, yeah. and buy you and, out. And give yeah. you more money. I know, so sorry. Yeah. You know. Let's give you more money. Yeah. We See, know we paid you to make the problem. Now we're going to have to pay you to, uh, uh, to not fix the problem, we need right. to be just to facilitate perpetuating the problem. <laughs> yeah.